everybody for being here and for adjusting your schedule. Usually these are the first uh, Fridays of the month. Um, I think I'm going to kick things off kind of uh, heavy. I, I think I'm going to use this rather than the, the, the mic thing. I'll just stay centered around the podium. Um, here, let's start it this way. This is my presentation on empathy. It's kind of, kind of ridiculous. Um, so we're going to kick things off kind of uh, a little bit heavy and then we'll, then we'll lighten things up. But, you know, it's, it's morning. Hopefully a few of you have had uh, a couple of drinks. So um, we're gonna stand up. The first law of empathy, first clause is that thou must stand up in order to experience empathy. Now, okay, what we're gonna do is uh, I want you to look around the room. Look around the room at the people, other people in here in the room. And I want you to make eye contact with somebody. And as soon as you find somebody that you're gonna make eye contact with, hopefully not the person right next to you, I want you to hold it. I want you to hold the eye contact. This is gonna be uncomfortable for some of you, but it's okay. This is gonna be okay. And now, as soon as you hold the eye contact, now, I want you to repeat the words, I am you and you are me. Okay, we're gonna do this, okay. I am you and you are me. Do it again. I am you and you are me. Again, I am you and you are me. One more time. I am you and you are me. Okay, cool, that's, that's great. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, that's, I, I'm not really sure if that has a lot to do with empathy, um, but I thought that it would be kind of a fun way to start things out this morning. Wasn't that, that was good, right? Yeah. Okay, so. So really, uh, I'm not really an expert on empathy, you know, nor, nor am I an expert on food or making uh, presentations. Um, but as a, as a UX practitioner, I, I do use uh, empathy a lot in what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it's really important for us uh, as software developers, really as, as a designer, I think. I think that a lot of us um, in the room as creatives uh, use empathy quite a lot in our work to understand the, the context of the person that we're designing for. So in my career, I spend a lot of time getting to know and speaking with the, the people that I'm designing things for. And I, I want to understand where do they work? Where do they live? What is, what is their life like? What are their motivations? Um, Goal-oriented design is a really, really important thing for software. Um, understanding that people actually have goals. They don't just like, you know, sit down at Excel because it's fun. Um, you know, I try to understand their frustrations, even maybe their fears or anxieties around software and their role in their job. And I use that information to, to try to like, you know, to, to design software, to get them where they want to be and maybe allay their feel, their, their fears, and, and help them achieve their goals a little bit quicker. Um, and, uh, you know, it's patterns of behavior and things like that. So empathy is really, really critical, and it involves talking to people and getting to know people. Um, I use that for clients, too, as a consultant, because even, even our clients, a lot of times, they have a lot going on in their lives. And, a lot going on you know, in, their, in their corporate world. Uh, it can be totally stressful, and, and so empathy's, empathy's um, really critical. Um, so you know, that kind of brings me to um, the second law of empathy, which if you, I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna read it to you because I hear that's like really, that's what you do in slides like this. If you take time to look into someone's face and you can imagine your face is their face, and you can see everybody else's you know, face in their face, um, then you can start to see people's faces in animals and even in inanimate objects. 
That's the second law of empathy. Everybody got that? See that door right back there? There's a face back in that door right now. <laughs> it's awkward, huh? Isn't that weird? That's empathy. Yay! Everybody's feeling empathy. Cool. All right. Yeah, that was a little weird. Um, so empathy is like a pretty, uh, you know, it's a, it's a major buzzword right now. Everybody's looking at me like, is he, this guy's got to be joking. Don't worry, I am. I'm not joking. A little bit. Um, so Obama's like mentioned empathy in, you know, at least half a dozen times. Um, when RJ came to me and said, um, you know, you're gonna be, can, can you speak about empathy? You'd be willing to do that. I um, said, yeah, sure. You know, I, I use it. I understand it. I actually wrote about it in a, in a book that I co-authored about how to use empathy in the design process. And I um, thought, yeah, it's, it's pretty natural. And I thought first Friday of the, uh, the month, that's great. We'll talk about it. And then, you know, that's right before Labor Day weekend. So we kind of, you know, rescheduled. So we thought a lot of people would be out that weekend. And so it lands here on 9-11. Um, and it totally stressed me out. Like, it just really, it's like, you got to be kidding me. Like, it's one thing to talk about empathy, which is a big topic to begin with. Um, I can make really bad, terrible, dumb jokes, you know, and talk about it. But, but to talk about this on 9-11, um, it's kind of heavy. And, you know, I was thinking about Obama mentioning talking a lot about empathy. I mean, there's, there's, the, there's a zealot, you know, in Kentucky right now is um, not granting marriage licenses to people. There are, um, there's a guy, you know, the lion killer. Um, it's every, you know, everywhere. There's so many current topics right now. I think that um, we see, you know, what's happening in Syria and all the refugees holy crap, we're gonna need a lot of empathy, right? We're going to need so much empathy. The world needs more empathy, or at least, you know, that's, um, that's the idea. So it really started kind of, you know, stressing me out. Um, what, what, what the heck am I gonna talk about? And we're gonna try to like broach all these topics today. And, um, and some people's feedback when I was talking this over with friends and people that I know, they're like, don't, don't worry about it, man. You know, it's just, it, just, it's another day. You're working yourself up too much. Um, it's just another day, you know, just it, we, we can move past this now and I thought Okay, you know, maybe maybe that's it, you know, I'll just I'm just gonna talk about empathy I'm not gonna worry about that. It's you know, it's 9-11 it's and, um, and Katrina was just you know a while ago and um, all that stuff, so I thought that was a good idea and then you know there I am um, reading uh, checking out, you know, current topics and, um, and uh, you know, flipping through uh, headlines and whatnot um, in the place that I enjoy doing it the most. Um, and, uh, and this is, you know, I guess this was like a couple of weeks ago. And, um, and then I, um, I come across uh, this photo. Um, anybody familiar with this? You seen this? You know where this is from? This is... This woman's, this is, this is Marcy Borders. Um, she, this, this photo was caught uh, um, on September 11th, um, uh, 2001, is it now? And, um, and it, it grabbed my attention. It was like, whoa, what is that, you know? Uh, I actually, I, I hadn't, I don't think I'd seen this before. You know, there's a lot of imagery um, that we saw and absorbed and, um, so I was intrigued and I flipped through it and um, this is her like about two years later and you can see in her face how affected she is and um, she actually had such a hard time coping with the event that she experienced. She became uh, addicted to drugs for a while, actually like crack cocaine for a little bit, and then she checked herself into rehab and recovered. Um, and I watched an interview with her where she's expressing her experiences there and she's sobbing. Um, she was diagnosed with stomach cancer um, and uh, eventually um, she, she died a couple of weeks ago um, due, due to this, um, and she left behind a couple of children. 
and, um, and I'm even getting emotional now. So here I am sitting on the toilet, which is, you know, whatever. Um, and I'm crying, you know, like I, I start just like weeping. And I think to myself, like, why, what good is this? You know, I, I'm, I am an um, empathic person and I, I am emotional and passionate and these things really affect me. And, um, and I realized that there's, this has to be talked about, you know, I have to mention it. And so I think that I have, um, you know, on this day and we do need empathy. We really, truly, critically need greater empathy in this world. But, and here's the thing, um, you know, in fact, maybe we can call this American Empathy Day. Um, but I don't, I, I don't know if that's right, because I, I feel like um, the kind of empathy that I use for work, I, I feel people and I understand them and, and I connect with them on an emotional level, but it, it's cognitive, right? There's a, there is a certain emotional distance that I keep and it leads directly and immediately to action. And so I, I realized very quickly what I can do to make this person's life better. And I keep that emotional distance. What I'm experiencing here in the bathroom is emotional empathy. It's affective empathy and I'm just crying. I'm just emoting. And I'm, I'm having this deep emotional reaction which really isn't all that helpful. It's not, I'm not doing anything with it. I'm just feeling. And maybe that's okay. And maybe, maybe some people need that. But I feel like the people here in this room, we've got it. You know, we're, we're creative kinds. We, we know how to feel emotion and experience that. Um, so maybe we can move on. Um, this is the best uh, law of empathy, which, um, you know, maybe we can talk about, uh, it, it was the second law or the fourth law or whatever number. I'm just making these things up, guys. And this one is really ridiculous. Um, where the, 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 in the, the word, the world, the word world has an, just is the word word itself, but there's an L in it. And that L means, look out for people's feelings. Look, look out. So that's what you can think of. And then the world, you know, being part of the word is, now nah, whatever, that's really terrible. Um, so, dumb jokes. I'm a father, by the way, when you go and he just, he rolls his eyes all the time. It's good, used to it. Um, so, like this slide, like, I, I couldn't find enough pictures, you know, that had to do with my presentation, so I thought, eh, let's go with the default keynote. This looks delicious. Um, so, what I thought was interesting, though, is I realized very soon that, okay, maybe, you know, empathy is, is really important in my job, and I, I've definitely spoken about how it's critical to create um, an empathic bond with people, and obviously, it's, it's such a buzzword right now, and everybody's rallying around this concept of empathy, and let's, let's experience um, empathy and promote empathy, and if the world is, if we're all sitting around and saying, I am you and you are me, it's going to be a better place. Um, but I, you know, I'm kind of a, a bit of a kind of a contrary asshole, you know, myself, and and so I'm attracted to contrary notions. And I started researching a little bit, and there's a lot of evidence or a lot of arguments that's saying that maybe empathy isn't all that helpful. Um, and here's kind of like I, I pulled it together for you guys, and uh, and there's there's several types of empathy that's bad, and I think that it mostly all fall into that second category, that emotional empathy or that. Um, that affective empathy. And so, first of all, you can uh, experience, I, I thought this would be an interesting angle, right, um, for, for the talk today. So, uh, you can have empathy for the wrong people. And this is something, this is a trap that a lot of people fall into. So, um, for instance, uh, judges um, actually end up being far more lenient on people who share their own socioeconomic background, right? White collar criminals get off easy because there's an empathy there that even judges who are trained to be very 
you know, logical and follow the law. There's, they, there's an empathy that they feel with the person that's being accused and they can be prone to even falling into this empathy trap um, themselves, which I think is really interesting. Um, and how many of you have given uh, money to panhandlers on the street? I don't, I don't say this is a bad thing to do. I've done it. I do it sometimes. And a lot of times it's around somebody's got a really good story and they know my triggers and they've got me. And it's not a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing at all. But if you sit down and you think like, man, you know, I gave this guy 10 bucks. What could the shelter that's like two blocks that way do with these $10? So much more right, than what this guy is going to do with the 10 that I gave him. Maybe he'll go out and get a meal, right? But it could feed a lot of people. Um, so we end up making these, these quick decisions, these, these gut kind of reactions when we have this, this uh, FaceTime with somebody. Um, they, they call this, you know, uh, um, you know, kind of the, I don't know, face effect. Uh, but so individual tragedy or even um, natural disaster, we end up emoting a lot. And that's what this machine, you know, in our pocket is all about. And that's where, you know, I originally had this slide that was like this really bad kind of, I mean, you think the rest of the jokes are bad. It's terrible. And RJ's like, whoa, buddy, I don't, I don't think I you should take that out of there. And it was about how, you know, we we'd like when we sat in the bathroom before, we wouldn't look at our phone. We'd look at a timely magazine or read the back of a bottle or something. And... And now we're just, um, we can cruise through these images of tragedy, disaster, emotion, and we're, um, we, we're triggered in uh, all of these ways. And we do feel empathy, which is good, or hopefully we do. Hopefully we haven't gotten desensitized, which is another risk of, of emotional empathy as you do become desensitized. But no, I'll get there in a minute. Actually, I already did. Maybe I'll just not mention that in the next one. Um, next slide. But um, really, we, we tend to react to these kind of things and we ignore, um, there's a huge outpouring of money that happens around a natural disaster, right? Um, but what about contributing money to preventable diseases or curable diseases or things that we know we can eradicate or wipe out? What about malnutrition? And so one of the traps of empathy is that we'll, we'll rise up and feel real good and we'll, we'll have that empathy and like, I want to do something, I'm going to give. And, and again, it's, it might be the wrong person or the wrong cause. Maybe your money's um, better spent elsewhere. So it's, it's kind of a trap. You know, on each, um, each and every day, I thought this is an interesting stat, and I'm going to read it because I'm bad with numbers. But each day, more than 10 times the number of people who died in Katrina every day, 10 people, 10 times the people uh, who died in Katrina died because of totally um, preventable diseases. Um, 13 times as many die from malnutrition. So yeah, we have empathy and we hear these stories um, and we wanna give money um, and help and maybe even rush down there, you know, which is even better to go and help physically but every day, every day, people are dying from all these things that have no face. It's, a, it's facelessness, right? But empathy you know, triggers us in a, in a certain way. Um, so, yeah, I don't mean to be such a bummer, guys. This is kind of tough. Um, so empathy can really also um, be destructive. Uh, the, the kind of stress and distress that can come up with this affective or emotional empathy can be really eventually debilitating. Um, if anything, um, you can also eventually hit burnout and stop feeling, you know, and you can scroll through images of people, you know, and hopefully, I don't, I don't know if I've, I'm too sensitive, I think, mostly for that, but, you know, it's like you get to the point where it's just noise and even individuals you know a guy sitting you know suffering on the street walk right by uh, you know um, because that that emotional empathy you, you hit burnout eventually so empathy um, the more you experience it and the more you experience it in, a, in an emotional or affective manner um, the quicker you're gonna hit hit this kind of um, burnout um, 
Also, uh, empathy can lead to really unhealthy relationships. Um, anybody who suffers from any kind of codependency, there's actually a fine line between codependency and empathy. Um, a lot of uh, codependents feel like they're experiencing an emotional empathy with um, a partner or a person. Um, and you could kind of read this as um, empathy, perhaps. Uh, but if you look at like the hashtag why I stay, has anybody ever checked that out? That's some really heavy stuff. You can see really quickly um, how much uh, this feeling of empathy towards your abusive partner or um, parent or colleague uh, can actually um, really trap people into wanting to stay um, in that relationship. So. Um, I, I think that, and this is, man, I, I'm going to apologize up front for doing this to you, but um, this is a super bummer. Uh, I'm sure, I don't know if any of you have been to India, raised anyone, India, yeah. Um, or how about seeing the movie Slumdog Millionaire, that was a super popular movie. So parents, some parents in India, or maybe not parents, more like shepherds or whatever, they they harm and maim and mutilate children um, to make them more effective beggars. And how, how do children get the money? Um, through empathy. Uh, it's, it's our empathy that makes us reach into our pockets and want to give this poor, maimed, mutilated child um, money. Um, but it's incredibly destructive to do that. It's terrible um, because we're perpetuating this this really terrible act um, so yeah it's it, empathy can really lead to terrible and bad things even um, which is kind of uh, scary um, and then the third third reason here um, um, number one dot three if you will um, is uh, is that empathy may not really be all that helpful um, in a lot of respects. So, especially this, um, this emotional or affective empathy. So imagine going to see a doctor, right? And uh, you want a doctor that can listen mm -hmm, and, and understand and, uh, and take their time with you. And that's, that's a cognitive type of empathy where there's still that distance. But imagine a doctor that was emoting having an emotional reaction. And so you're crying, and then the doctor starts crying. And you're stressed out, and the doctor's like, oh, I don't know what to do. You know, that would be terrible. That would be awful. Um, it would be the, the least helpful thing um, if, if a doctor's uh, experiencing the same kind of anxiety um, you are. You want your, your doctors to be, you know, cool and professional, but still listen and take your time. So, um, not helpful form of empathy. It, any, uh, any of you are parents, um, you totally get this kind of principle, right? Where uh, you do need to listen and you, you want to connect. It's important to connect and feel and have empathy with your children, obviously, clearly. But, um, at the same time, you can't just emotionally react and key in and tune in. And if they're like angry, you get uh, angry too. And if they're, you know, spazzing out, you spaz out and throw stuff. Um, totally not effective. It's uh, you have to keep that that um, that gap. So empathy um, is, isn't helpful there. Um, a really interesting study that I found is an article in the New York Times about the. The, the brain's empathy gap. And they, uh, a, a researcher from MIT um, did this really extensive study where they actually went to um, Israel and were teaching empathy to Palestinians and Israelis. And as a way to maybe um, de-escalate violence. And what they found is that they could easily foster a great amount of empathy with individuals. But for some reason, again and again, no matter how many ways they angled it, as soon as the group dynamic was involved, and I have a background in sociology, I think this is like super fascinating stuff. As soon as the 
the group dynamic was involved right out the window, that empathy. That empathy was gone with the group. Um, so it was, I kept reading this article like, okay, so then what? And what did they do? You know, what did they find that worked? Nothing, which is, you know, um, empathy just wasn't really a great tool to de-escalate group-based violence. Um, so with that, you know, um, maybe it's, maybe we shouldn't call this American Empathy Day. Um, I think that, uh, if anything, um, if we look at how, you know, the cognitive empathy might lead to action, um, and, uh, but we, we do still need some kind of, some kind of an emotional, I think that, I think that it's, it's really easy for us to use the word empathy, our culture, to bandy it around as a way to like, yeah, empathy, yeah, we do need to feel more empathy, empathy would be great. But I think that we're using it in the wrong context a lot of times. We're using it as this emotional trigger, right? We're gonna show you some images online. We're gonna, we're gonna like trigger your emotions. And you feel empathy, good, yeah. And you need to share it with some other people so that they'll feel empathy too. But I don't feel like this is very helpful. I feel like the word empathy, if we were talking about it more in terms of compassion, right? We use the word compassion, just get rid of empathy, just say compassion. Or, hey, let's all be brave, like really brave, and just say love. I think that maybe, maybe that's leading somewhere, right? With, with love, real love, you know, it's, maybe that's it. Real, true compassion. I think empathy's, empathy's like maybe the first step. That's, that's baby steps. Um, and uh, I guess with that in mind, um, yeah. Um, thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah.